What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to talk about a phenomena. I'm going to start very abstractly, but then we're going to work towards practical examples. Um, the phenomena that I am referring to is very pertinent to the field of psychiatry because in psychiatry, we're dealing with people who are out of control that our culture has deemed uh, really unacceptable. People who want to hurt people, people who want to hurt themselves, people who have given up on life itself. And when we think about this phenomena, we have to understand that people are out of control. They don't feel in control of their own affects, their own emotions. They don't have the way to steer their own ship, let alone negotiate and articulate and socialize in a very socially acceptable way with other people. But when we do imagine a world where people do successfully relate, successfully play, successfully downregulate the emotional experience, the stress response. When people are being human in the way that we are designed, we can be resilient, right? We can manage a higher level of allostatic stress. We can be stressed, but yet thrive. Yes. This is the ideal that excites me. It's a model that says, what produces a resilient and happy and well socialized person? What is the nuts and bolts of producing a way of being in the world that tolerates certainty amidst the chaos, in fact, is ready to go into the unknown, to fight, to defend, to go, I guess, to the dragon and get the treasure, to be a hero, one could say. What, 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 what produces that? I have discovered and I have learned that th those of us who are able to become heroes, okay, and I know all of us can, but there's something to be said for those who inherit something like uh, an ability to do X, Y, and Z, any kind of strength. And the big differentiator between people who are more emotionally and psychologically resilient is the attention, the individualized attention of their attachment figures early in their life. That sort of flexibility of the parent, of the adult, opens the door of the child to tolerate uncertainty to tolerate different ways of being in the world. Ways of being. How do we respect ways of being and ways of relating without first being grounded safely within our own sense of being? Well, we can't, and that is a gift that is freely given by those who love us and cherish us. So with that being said, what a great, profound responsibility we have, my goodness, over our children, over our neighbors, we are called to love and attend in a way that opens that window of tolerance for differences among people. As an INFP, as an idealist, as an Enneagram 9, I have this ability to be extremely open to the differences and to respect them and cherish them. And I want to get to work doing that with my future clients. I I'm passionate about this work. I know that this work is a spiritual work because when we are looking into the unknown, we're saying, I am willing to risk death in some sense. I am willing to believe in something, to have such a conviction that I'm willing to sacrifice myself. And I know that I can't think of anything that drives me more than being so strongly convicted and grounded in truth that I can open the door to other people to come to that conclusion in their own way, in the way that really God has made them. What an exciting endeavor. If you found this video and this insight relatable or interesting, please comment below, like the video, and subscribe to see more from me. I've been playing with different ideas for the future. I am moving forward in my interests right now, and I'm becoming increasingly more committed that I am just, I am in love with working with people psychotherapeutically. And I get excited about taking this approach where we are framing things more psycho, spiritually, psychodynamically. And interestingly, it's really the self-reflective process that allows this to emerge it's not really doing things it's doing things but then taking the time to reflect on what it means to to, 
to receive uh, perhaps what you might call the truth? Yes. Well, well, yeah, I'll end there. Bye-bye. See ya.